Pleasant good evening. Welcome to our Tuesday night of our time of awakening. Are you awake? Okay, good. Now, now that was a good I, I am awake. So now we call it time of awakening because it's the time at the beginning. Actually, I had um, someone ask me this. Um, actually, earlier in January, he said, why, why is it a time of awakening? And I just assume we all know. So let me remind you that it's called time of awakening because we set this time aside. Awakening is a revival term. And we want to revive the body of Christ to do that which he's called for the year. So it's to kind of strike the match, to light a flame, to get us going on the right track, with the right focus, with the right heart. If there's some junk you need to take care of, take care of it. If there's a thing you need to do, let's do it. And so that's what it is. That's why we call it time of awakening to wake us up if you're even dozing. Because we are moving. So that was that's what this week is all about. And we praise the Lord for Brother Kwame. I think he's given us some matches to strike underneath us. And so let's continue to pray for the Lord to do his work. And so I will read um, a beautiful revival psalm, Psalm um, 85. And we'll just read all 13 verses and then jump right into um, singing Psalm 85. It says, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what, the, what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his, and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in the land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have, have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. That's a wonderful passage. It's a wonderful revival passage we heard last night. Oh, turn us, O oh Lord. Don't cause no judgment to come. Don't curse this tree. Oh, Lord, turn us, revive us again. And that's our prayer. Let's pray, and I'm going to ask Brother Dennis to come. Father, we are listening for your word tonight, so may our hearts be tender tonight. Be with your manservant. Be with the service. Receive full glory today. Be pleased. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Dennis. Good night, everyone. Let me ask you, when you as you walk this uh, Christian life, as you walk with Jesus, are you rejoicing? Huh? I can't hear you. Night and day, night and day. Well, the songwriter says, I am rejoicing night and day as I walk that pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. 
and the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret, all is this, that the comforter abides in me. He abides. That's the news. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace.
good evening again. I just want to say it's good to have, I know he slipped in the back and he won't be saying, but it's good to have Pastor David out tonight. We've been praying for him. He's not been doing well. And so I tell him we definitely miss him when, when he's not doing well because he seems to be like furniture, always here. I shouldn't say that, Brother David, but we're always glad to have you here. So it's always good to have you in our midst. And I actually say that as a bridge to where we're going with, um, with Brother Kwame. Just because sometimes they, we have those who are always accessible or near or here, we take them for granted, don't we? And so um, and I, I've been convicted a few times this week and tonight again. Um, with Brother Kwame, because, you know, as he came in, if you notice, he stayed down there, and I'm thinking, why you don't come up here? Why are you, are you up here? Why are you still down there? And it's because he should be escorted up. Now, by the way, so that's what you do to a guest, you know? And sometimes we, we get so comfortable in use that we forget that he is our guest speaker this week, sent from God with a message, and we should treat him as so. And so I say that to say um, he has needs, as all of our guest speakers do, and our offering time is the time that we ask the church to prayerfully consider what it is you would have to give. Now, you've been blessed this week. Now, the question is, Lord, what is my responsibility now? And so we have one more time, and that's tomorrow night. So I say that tonight. So I'm going to ask that you prayerfully consider um, Brother Kwame. Again, he is one of ours, and I know we feel as though he's a member of Abundant Life, you know. <laughs> and he is, but he is our guest for this week. And we're not putting him up in a hotel we're not giving him a driver. We're not doing all those things, and sometimes we can take it for granted. Let us not do so this week with Brother Kwame. Enough said. <laughs> well, at this time, I'm going to pray for the offering, and then we will hear from the choir, and then I'm just going to ask for the dentist to lead us into that one um, chorus as the choir takes their seat, just so that they can be prepared and ready when the word is given tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the privilege of giving. And now, Lord, you have blessed, and I believe even in tough times you bless your people. I believe so. And so, Lord, we do pray the blessing upon your people here. But we are also praying, Lord, that you use them to bless Brother Kwame this week. And so help us to pray specifically about what we would have to give. Use your word today in our hearts, tonight. And Lord, use Brother Kwame. And so may, may there be nothing that withholds your Holy Spirit from doing the work. So we ask as hungry people. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you. Thank you, Chapel Singers, for that. And as, as Brother Dennis is coming, as we sing that song, Open Our Eyes, Lord, just to prepare our hearts, um, just a quick announcement. We did hear that Brother Cornell is home today. So praise the Lord for that. Lots of prayer still is needed, but he's home. So praise the Lord for that. Let us stand, because we sing better when we stand. Let us stand, open our eyes, Lord. evening abundant life evening. that doesn't sound like every everybody that sounds like most but that doesn't sound like everybody good evening abundant life evening. all right that sounds like everybody now glad that you are out tonight thank you for making the time I, I try to be very careful with the word sacrifice and sometimes we use that very loosely you know because you had to say up a little later that was a sacrifice what Jesus did on the cross was a sacrifice uh, what we do is sometimes an inconvenience or oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of an extra, you know, responsibility, but I try to keep the word sacrifice for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. But I'm glad that you're here this, uh, tonight, and, and hopefully tonight and tomorrow night, uh, I want the Holy Spirit to use his word to just give us all instructions. I need the message just as much as you do, uh, just to give us the instructions that he wants us to follow. Uh, we already sang, open our eyes, Lord, and I believe the, the, that you have prayed that prayerfully. I hope you have, and I just want us to pray now, and uh, we will get into the Word of God this evening. So just take a quick moment of prayer. Ask the Lord to speak to your heart, and then I'll pray, and we'll get started tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house tonight. Thank you for the opportunity for us to gather around your word, to be encouraged, convicted, uh, whatever, need, whatever we need to do to be more like your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, the theme for, for this church, your church, this, this year is to work the works, um, to serve, to minister, to, to, to give of self. And I pray that those that are here tonight and those who may be watching this now or later would hear from your Holy Spirit exactly what work you would want them to do. And so I pray your Holy Spirit to give me the words to say, how much and how, what to say and what not to say. And may you be honored and glorified. 
We ask these things in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to give you an illustration to hopefully get you to understand the theme or the, 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 the mindset that we will have as we go through the Word of God tonight and tomorrow night and, of course, last night. So last night we spoke about bearing fruit. And what kind of tree was it? It was a fig tree. Okay, so good. So it was this fig tree, and we recognize that Jesus expects us to bear fruit. There were several of you who stood physically, and I believe there were several of you who stood in your heart and you said, hey, I want to bear fruit. Maybe you weren't here last night. Maybe you're watching this now. You're watching this later, and you say, hey, I want to bear fruit. So I'm going to take the word of God, and I'm going to give you what I believe as I read the scriptures and as I study the scriptures, the, the way, the process, if you want to use that term, of how a believer is to bear fruit. I'm going to give you a silly illustration to help you understand, and I hope it helps you to understand, okay? So, if you could put the slide up there, please. All right, thank you. All right, so leave it right there. Okay, so now let's say this. It's the beginning of the year, and you, like me, say you could lose a few pounds, okay? And so... Thank you for not laughing. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was good. They were like, oh, really? You need to? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and, you, and you go and uh, you, there's a new gym and uh, the gym membership fee is $500. Brother Nathan, $500. And you're like, wow. You're like, man, but I got I, I to gotta, I gotta get in shape and, and I got to lose some weight this year. 2024, I don't want to be fat no more. That's my theme, you know? And <laughs> you say, look here, man, this is me. I got to go and I got to get this. And and so you go and you, you get the $500, you scrap, you, you know, you borrow a little bit from this one and that one, Pastor Gil give you a slow five, and then you get there and you pay $500. Then, of course, you got to get up early in the morning. So not only are you paying $500, you got to get up 5 o'clock in the morning to go to said gym. So the first day of the gym, you're tired, you're broke, you're hungry, it's cold, and now you get to meet your personal trainer. And your personal trainer comes out and looks like that. <laughs> and you say to yourself, I don't know if I as big as him. <laughs> so you would have to say, I spent all of that money in vain because how could this person tell me what to do when they're not doing it themselves? <laughs> All right. A lot of times, and, and as, even as we think about the Pharisees, we spoke with the Pharisees last night, a lot of times we get this mandate to work, to serve, and we want to jump into a ministry, and we want to start serving the Lord, and there's that zeal and that hunger, and that's, that's good. Zeal is good. Zeal has to be controlled. That's why you have leadership. But zeal is good, and you have this desire, and you want to serve, and you want to do all these different things. But here's the problem. You're not going to bear fruit with other people's lives until you bear fruit in your own life. So don't, don't think, okay, how am I going to reach the world? And how am I going to reach uh, the, the out islands? And how am I going to reach Soldier Road? And how am I going to reach this community? And how am I going to reach... The first person that needs to be reached is you. So that when you are where you need to be spiritually, then God opens the door for you to bear fruit. And so I put a little simple thing like this. I say, how to bear fruit? You bear fruit, number one, internally. And then you bear it externally. Not the other way around. You can't serve your way to holiness. You have to be holy so that you can serve. So tonight, I want us to look at the aspect of internal fruit bearing. So take your Bibles with me, please, and turn to Galatians chapter 5. Familiar passage to those of us who have been uh, saved for uh, any amount of time. Galatians chapter 5. And let's look at what the Bible says, and we're just going to focus on how we can be fruit-bearing internally. How can we bear fruit internally? 
And then tomorrow night, Lord's willing, we will deal with how to bear fruit externally. All right? Galatians chapter 5. Let's stand and read one verse of scripture. Let's read this verse of scripture, verse number 16. Let's read that together, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. All right, let's read it together. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, let's have all the men say it this time, all the men. Let's say it together, men. This I say then, Okay, all the ladies tonight, here we go. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And one more time together, church. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So tonight we're going to discuss the topic of walking in the spirit, because as many of you will know. In verse number 22, it speaks of the fruit of the Spirit. You're not going to get the fruit of the Spirit until you learn how to walk in the Spirit. So walking precedes or comes before production, both internally and externally. So let's look at what it says. So first of all, let's look at the command. We just read the command. The command says, this I th say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The word walk. A lot of times what we do by, by fault, we, make, we, we do this at times, we take our own language, our own English language, and we put it on the Bible to make it means what we know it to mean. Now when we say walk, we would mean I'm just walking back and forth. That's what it means to walk, okay? That's not what it means here. This particular word walk means to live or to re regulate one's life. So this is a pattern of life for you. I thought of one illustration. I'm, I could even give you a couple more, but here's an illustration. Let's say tonight after church, uh, me and, and Brother Ryan and some of the other men, we decide to go play basketball. Okay? <laughs> you, ready? you ready? feel the aches and pains, don't you? Right? Well, I'll tell you what would happen. If we went and played basketball tonight, you know what we would do? we would have played basketball. You know who those guys are on the screen? Those are basketball players. That's what they do. That's what they look, that's what they focus on. Steph Curry takes, I think they said he takes like 500 jump shots a day. They exercise, they sacrifice. Their whole life and their whole schedule is based on one thing, playing basketball because they are basketball players. They walk the life of a basketball player. Everything about their life, basketball. Here's what Paul is saying to the church of Galatia. Allow your life to be known by this fact, that you walk and live by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God. That's what we should be. And I don't know about you, but I get convicted just thinking about that. Better than being the best preacher, the best bus driver, the best Sunday school teacher, the best musician, what the goal should be is that person is led by the Holy Spirit of God. When that person comes in the room, I get convicted. When that person comes into the room, I get encouraged because I know they have a word for me. I know they have something to, to pray for me with. I know they got something. Man, listen, when that person comes into the room, I could almost sense the spirit of God on their life. And you know the old, well, sorry, you, you may not know it, but some people have said in the past, when you, you, when you hang around fire, you smell like smoke. And people know you smell like smoke. And they say, well, you smoky, eh? They say, you've been around a fire, eh? They should have that same mentality when, when we've been praying and talking to God. And they should say, boy, something, something different about you. Something, there's something coming off of you, and that should be the Holy Spirit of God. So the first thing it says is we should walk in the Spirit, meaning that our life should be relegated by the Spirit. Now, the question then becomes, 
who is the Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit. Okay? So you're not going to completely understand this because I don't completely understand this. And I hear people even say, well, when we get to heaven, we'll understand all things. I don't know if I'll always, I don't even know if when I get to heaven, I'll understand it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But God is three in one. And therefore, he can be revealed as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I don't understand how all of them are one, and at the same time, all of them are different. They all are holy. They all have power. They were all a part of creation. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, he says, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is God. So the Holy Spirit is God. He is the third person of the Trinity. He has emotions. Now here's one of the things that the Holy Spirit does. Take your Bibles with me, please, and turn, keep, keep your finger in Galatians and turn with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, just a few pages back. John chapter 14. He does several things, but I want us to focus on one thing to, tonight that he does that's going to play a part in all of this. Galatians chapter 4, sorry, John chapter 14. Notice what it says in verse number 26. It says, but the comforter, that's another name for the Holy Spirit. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So, so right now, these words are written in what? Red. So who is speaking? Jesus. Jesus is speaking about the Father, and he's speaking about the Holy Spirit. So you have all three people, all three individuals that is one in this verse. It says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall, what's the next word, church? Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So one of the key elements that the Holy Spirit does is he teaches how does the Holy Spirit teach? The Holy Spirit uses his word to teach us things that, we want to, that he wants us to do. If you have ever been reading your devotion time, if you've ever been in a sermon or a message or you've ever been somewhere and you've been reading the scripture, and you would know this, the Holy Spirit would put a verse in your viewing and your reading, and you, were intended, you had intended to read the whole chapter. And you stop at one verse. And the Holy Spirit said, this, this is where I want you to, to park right here. I don't want you to read the whole chapter. I want to teach you something from this verse. And maybe it's a verse on forgiveness. And right there, as you're reading the word of God, the Holy Spirit says, now remember that person you haven't forgiven? You need to forgive them. That's how the Holy Spirit teaches us what to do when it comes to his word. So he teaches us. Then, and take your Bibles with me now and don't go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Just a few pages back as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from Galatians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> I just clear my throat, don't worry. Let me get a drink of water. I hear talking. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Just so we get an understanding of the Holy Spirit. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So according to this verse, where does the Holy Spirit reside? In our bodies. So no longer, as we looked at the temple on Sunday night, no longer is the Holy Spirit, or no longer is God's presence in a physical building. His presence is in us, and now we are his temple. So here's, here's the fact. What you wouldn't do in church, you shouldn't do in your life. Because your body now is the temple. So if you say, well, I'd never swear in church. Well, you shouldn't swear in life. Do you recognize that we are just as, in, in, in spiritual terms, we are just as holy because the Holy Spirit lives within us? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing anything with any girl uh, that's not my wife in church. I respect the church too much. Well, you need to respect your body that much. So 
the Holy Spirit lives within us. And then it says, back to Galatians chapter 5, it says, the Holy Spirit lives within us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And then in Galatians 5, it says, walk ye in the Spirit or be influenced by the Spirit. So here's, here's the thought that I had. Well, if the Holy Spirit lives within me, why doesn't he just tell me what to do and I do it? Why, why am I still being tempted? Why do I still fall? Why do I still fail? Why, why, do I, why do those things happen? Why can't he just be in me and I be like a robot and, and he tells me what to do? And I'll give you two reasons why it's still difficult for us. Number one, because there are times when we quench the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit tells us to do something and we shut it down. When you think of the word quench, I want you to think of the, the, the term fire extinguisher. And if there's a fire, you get the fire extinguisher, and that blazing fire, once you put that fire extinguisher on it, the fire ceases. See, that's what happens sometimes when you see somebody get saved, and they, they're on fire for God. And then God begins to tell them, okay, now I need you to take this thing out of your life. Ooh, God, I don't want to take that out of my life. That's my boo. That's my music. That's my friends. That's my entertainment, God. I don't want to take that out of my life. And then you start to quench. And then he tells you something else. And you say, no, God, I don't feel like doing that. I don't want to do that. And watch how this works. The more you quench the Spirit of God, the easier it becomes to quench the Spirit of God. And anybody in here who has been backslidden knows that. One day of backsliding can very easily lead to six months of backsliding. But I'll also say this. The more we obey the Holy Spirit, the easier it is for us to continue to obey him. So the Holy Spirit can be quenched, and then also it says in Acts chapter 7, verse 21, that we can resist the Holy Spirit means to strive against or to oppose. The Holy Spirit tells us what to do. I want you to do this, and we just simply say no. We quench it. We resist it. And so even though the Holy Spirit of God lives within us, if we are not sensitive to his leading, we can quench him, and we can resist him. So the Holy Spirit, he is in our bodies, and he is there to govern us, to rule us. All right, so that's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, walk, regulate your life, let your life be governed, live a life that Jesus, sorry, that the Holy Spirit is the one controlling your life. Everybody got that? Okay. Now here's the battle, verse number 17. So now we have a battle. Verse 17 says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. Okay, preacher, I thought when I got saved that I would never sin again. Okay, well, sorry, news flash, that's not what happens. Sin has three grips on us before salvation. There is the presence of sin. There is the punishment of sin. And there is the power of sin. So what happens at salvation? At salvation, the Holy Spirit saves us from the power of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, if, how many of you have dogs? You have dogs. How many of you have pot cakes? Okay, good. At least you're honest in church, right? We have some pot cakes, and here's what would happen. Every day, back, back a while back, we don't do it now, but every day we used to separate them because they used to eat each other's food. And so we had to separate them into different cages, feed them, and then open the gate and let them go. Well, at some point, we said, listen, we don't need to keep doing this. So we said, hey, here's what we can do. We can just feed the dogs and we can leave it like that, and then we, we just go. So I would go back, Brother Dennis, and I would open the gate, and guess what the dog do? Stay right there. 
And I say, this dumb dog. <laughs> I say, get out. But he was so programmed to being in that cage, it's like, it's hard for him to understand. I don't, I don't have to be in here no more. Ladies and gentlemen, when we got saved, we were saved from the power of sin. The chains fell off. I am a new creature. Sin does not have dominion over me. So why do I sin? I no longer sin because I have to. When I sin, I sin because I want to. But I am just like that dog in the cage. When I say, oh, this sin, I can't beat this sin. This sin is too much for me. This temptation is too big. I cannot do it. No, no, my friend, you got saved. You got saved from the power of sin when you got saved. We got saved from the power of sin and we got saved from the penalty of sin. Thank God I am no longer going to hell. I'm no longer going to the lake of fire. That particular part of my life is secure. I receive Jesus Christ. I am his and he is mine. When I die, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know where you go in, but I know where I go in. So we were saved from the penalty of sin. We were saved from the power of sin, but we are not saved from the presence of sin. We still live in a sinful world. We still live in a sinful body. And there is this battle now. So the moment you get saved, it's like back in the old days, the Celtics against the Lakers. <laughs> now let me see what kind of church this is. Let me see what kind of church this is. How many? Oh, I thought Brother Stubbs was going to say something. <laughs> how, many, how many of you are, are Laker fans? Y'all need revival. <laughs> y'all need an awakening. <laughs> How many of y'all are Celtics fans? Not a, one? <laughs> those Lakers, remember back in the days, back in the 80s, 90s, those Lakers, Celtics, they were back and forth. They battled, they fought, they did all those different things. That's what ha that's what happening right now as you listen to this message. The Holy Spirit of God is trying to tell you, okay, here's what you need to do to live right, to be clean, to be used. Here's what you need to do to be fruitful for my kingdom. Here's the areas of your life that you need to work on. Here it is. And your flesh is saying this. Man, that sounds too hard. But I kind of like what I do. Nobody knows. I can still serve God and keep my sin. So right now, in your heart and in your mind, there's this battle, there's this friction going on. It says the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary one to the other. Folks, I don't want, I don't want abundant life to get caught up in these worldly churches. And you look at some worldly church, and you come to the pastor and say, Pastor, why can't we do this in our church so that we can have as many people in our church as they do on, the, on TV or in whatever church it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with having a boat on the water, but there's a problem when the water's in the boat. And when you start to allow the world and the flesh and that influence to start to permeate from the pulpit and in the church, it's going to deaden the church. It's going to kill the church. Because what you're basically telling the church is this. What you're telling God is this. God, you go to the back of the building. We want the flesh up front. So here is, here is now, we got this battle. We got the flesh against the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 7 verse 18 that in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. There's nothing good about my flesh. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 8 that within this flesh we cannot please God. There's nothing good about this flesh. And the flesh battles against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And they are going against each other. Uh, the, the, the Bible speaks about the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh means a, a lustful desire or a, a sinful desire in that we want something God does not want us to have. That's the lust. And the flesh is our human nature that was absent of God. And once we get saved, we have the presence of God, but we act as if God's no longer alive. And so this flesh battles the spirit, but then it says this 
it says, but if ye are led, verse 18, but if ye are led of the Spirit. Well, okay, led means to be taken along. It has the concept of even leading a blind person or a child. And so I started to figure out, well, what's the difference between walk and led? So here's, here's what I thought was very good. This is um, from a website, desiringgod.com. says, walking by the Spirit and leading and being led by the Spirit refer to the same thing. Being led by the Spirit stresses the Spirit's, the Spirit's initiative and enablement. Walking by the Spirit spe- stresses our resulting behavior. When it speaks about walking in the Spirit, that's something you and I can do. Being led of the Spirit, only the Holy Spirit does that. So how does it work hand in hand? Well, if Pastor Cranston, stand up for me please, sir. If Pastor Cranston were blind, and he couldn't see, and he asked, and, he, and I said, Pastor Cranston, I want you to come to me over here. And I started to pull him, and he's, you don't go. I'm trying to lead, but he's not walking. He's not submitting to my leadership. So that means to be led. So I'm trying to lead, lead, I'm trying to influence him, but he is not walking. So what's supposed to happen is, when I lead, now you can come, now he walks, he trusts me, he follows my leadership, he listens to me, he is sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God, he is sensitive to the Word of God. When the preaching begins, he gets convicted. Why? Because he is leading, I'm leading him, and he is walking. It's a, it's a dual combination. Everybody got that? So, thank you, sir. So that's the way it's supposed to work. We're supposed to be led of the Spirit, and then we're supposed to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to give you a couple of illustrations that I, that I hope will help you, and then we're going to look at the results or the fruit, and then we'll go. Let me, let me just read these verses. I thought these were some good verses. Some great verses for us to pray every morning. Just listen to these verses, and if you want them afterwards, I have them. Psalm 5, verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Psalm 25, 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Psalm 27, 11, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. Psalm 31, 3, for thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Psalm 43, 3, O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. You get the picture? You see where David and the psalmist were coming to the point of recognizing, Father, I need you to lead me. All of us, this is the mindset that I try to have. I don't always have it. God knows I, I fail, but I try to have it. I try to plan my day in pencil because I don't know what God's going to put on my day. But here's what I want. I want God to have me sensitive to his leading, that I walk where he wants me to walk. And maybe I wasn't intending on seeing somebody or talking to somebody, but God brought us in that same path because I'm allowing him to lead me. Not my plans, not my schedule, not my wants, but God's plan, the Holy Spirit's leading. I'll give you a couple examples. One year, I was at a school. If I mention a school, I think many of you would know it. I was at a school, and they, had, they invited me to preach. I was there for a week. At the end of the week, they took up a love offering. They gave it to me. And I did this, and I think, again, something that God convicted. I used to get convicted while I preach, and I don't, I don't know about the other preachers, but I used to get convicted, because I need to do this more. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do with this, with this money? And there was an influence, uh, a pulling that said, take that check and put it back in the school. Don't take the check. And I took the check. And I, I, you all say, boy, you spiritual. Boy, that was a fight. <laughs> that, wasn't a, that wasn't no spirituality here. God was like, give me this check. But it was as if the Holy Spirit, because see, I had to ask him, I, I hope I don't get in trouble. I know the Bible speaks about a tithe, but I don't, I don't think we understand it all the way. It's not 10% belongs to God and 90% belongs to me. It's 100% belongs to God. Yes. Yes. 100%. And some people say, oh, let me give him this 10% and then that's, 
No, no. First of all, if you're giving it like that to God, he don't want it. You might as well keep that and go, go buy something. Go buy bamboo. Okay? Bamboo getting a lot. Someone from bamboo may work here. I think that... So what I had to realize is every time the offering plate goes around, Lord, how much do you want me to give? You want me to give all? You want me to give some? You want me to give 10%? You want me to give 5%? You want me to give 50%? God, what do you want me to do? Because I want to be led by the Spirit. So God had led me one time to do that. There's other times when I would be driving. I got some gospel tracks and I'm driving. And I see somebody sitting down in, in, on the road or sitting down over there and I'm driving, you know, driving. Doo, 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 doo. Holy Spirit, influence. Give that person a gospel track and tell them about Jesus. Okay, Father, in order for me to do that, um, I would have to come off the road, go back round the roundabout, come through the same traffic, come down. I got all my excuses now, all my excuses. And God said, go give the person a gospel track and share the gospel. Yes, Father. Turn back around, go. So there have been times when that's happened. And the last one I can give you is this. I had gotten into a, I think I should call it altercation. Not altercation, it wasn't physical. But I was a vice principal and we took some students off to school. Sorry, we took some students off to a competition from our school. And me and this one boy, I lost my temper. I got, I got in the flesh, <laughs> okay? I was in the flesh. And I row him out right in front of Walmart. And I, I apologize to Walmart. <laughs> And I was mad, but I was the vice principal, right? I was the vice principal. Don't tell me what to do. You was a boy. Don't do, 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 do. And he rowing me back and all this kind of stuff. And I humble him and da, 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 da. well, he eventually left the school. I was righteous in my righteous indignation because I'm the vice principal. He shouldn't disrespect me like that. Not thinking about my fleshly act that caused him to act fleshly, but I think and I I was right. And man, listen, when, when, just like how I'm talking about this now, whenever there was a message about forgiveness and all that kind of stuff, the Holy Spirit, that's you and that young man. That's you and that young man. I say, okay, Father, I didn't know where he lived. I say, if you, know, if I, if you allow me to see him, I'll apologize to him. This was months later. I'm driving. I see him. I say, boy, Lord, this would be a better day tomorrow if I could just... Because <laughs> y'all you're thinking I'm some spiritual giant. I ain't no spiritual giant. I ain't no spiritual giant. I say, Lord, you know, he going into the wash house. He got things to do. I don't want to see his drawers. I know he could be embarrassed. Lord, I can get him back. I put a dentist. I can get him back later, man. I got... and, the Lord, and the Lord influenced. Didn't you pray that you would see him? Goodness. I pulled up. He was coming out as I was coming out of the car. And I said, hey, man, how you doing? He said, I'm okay, I'm okay. I said, listen, what I did in the States that time, I was 100% wrong. And I want to apologize to you. And boy, I tell you, I thought he was going to rub it in. You know what he said? He said, Mr. Selva, I apologize too. And it was that day when I realized, you know what? Sometimes our obedience to the Holy Spirit helps someone else to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. But that was my, influ the Holy Spirit was leading me and influencing me and I was tugging and I, wouldn't, I couldn't sleep good, I couldn't do this. Anytime the message come, I turn on off my ears, I think about something else. Until the Holy Spirit said, until you get that right, you're going to be uncomfortable. And I said, okay, Father. And that's the way the Holy Spirit does it. We, we get into his word and we listen to him and we submit to him. The last part. Okay. You have two options tonight. You could either walk in the spirit or you can walk in the flesh. That is 100% your decision. I cannot twist your arm. I cannot do anything. But I'll tell you this. If you walk in the spirit, you can bear fruit internally and all of a sudden you will see opportunities for you to bear fruit externally. But if you walk in this, the flesh, there's no good thing that could come out of that. So let's look. So here's the test. You now have to test yourself to see if you look more like the flesh is ruling or more like the Holy Spirit is ruling. So let's look at, let's look at we had this battle of the flesh against the spirit. Let's look at the fruit. Let's look at the fruit. 
fruit of the flesh. Notice what it says in verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, displayed, which are these? Adultery, unlawful sexual relationship with another person's spouse. But please do not forget this as well. Matthew 5, 27 and 28 um, Jesus is speaking. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, he that lusteth after woman, I'm paraphrasing, you can't see it too well, but he that lusteth after woman hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. If you have a problem with lust, you're, it's because you're living in the flesh. So we have adultery. Then it goes on and it says fornication, which is simple, similar, fornication. This now includes adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals. Okay? That's the fornication. Uncleanness, meaning dirty thoughts. Uh, it could be immoral. Your, your words are not clean. Your life is not clean. Your thoughts are not clean. You are unclean. Lasciviousness, unbridled lust, no control. If you ever see those people running down a carnival, they have no control. The music, the, the alcohol, everything controls them except the Holy Spirit of God. That's lasciviousness. They have unbridled lust. Idolatry. A lot of times we think of idolatry and we think of bowing down to an animal or bowing down to Buddha statue. But idolatry is whenever we put anything above God. And you, this is how you can know if it's an idol in your life. If you sin to get it, or if you sin when you don't get it, that's an idol. So we have idolatry. Then there's witchcraft. Witchcraft does talk about dealing with familiar spirits and all those things, but that word witchcraft comes from the Greek word pharmacia, and that means drugs. So that's why you see so much drugs, and you see how people look when they're on drugs? There's demonic influences dealing with that drugs. And that's why it takes your mind. That's why it affects your mind so that, the, so that the demons and the different evil ones can come in. So we have witchcraft, hatred, hostility against another. You hate somebody. Somebody did something to you. You know those people, someone did something to them 30 years ago and they still hate the person now? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. You ever been mad at somebody for so long? You forgot why you was mad at them, but you just know you was mad at them? <laughs> Tell the truth and shame the devil. Boy, that was me. I don't even know why I'm mad at them, but I just, mad, I just, I know I'm supposed to be mad at you. Yes. Hatred. Next, uh, variance. Variance, strife. Arguments. Also deals with jealousy. Always arguing. All right, emulations. Uh, jealousy. Lower, lowering others to lift up yourself. And also jealousy as seen in the picture. But you like to put people down to lift yourself up. Ooh, that's the flesh. That's not the spirit. Uh, wrath. Wrath, violent emotion, revenge. All right? Strife. Um, elect, elect, electioneering for office. You put yourself forward. In other words, it's all about you. You got to be the one in the front of the line. You got to be the one to sit at the head table. You got to be the one that they call on to pray or they call on to serve or they give an award to. You got to be the one up front. That's the concept with strife. Sedition, fractions. You know, you could have sedition in the church. This set of people don't talk to that set of people. When this set of people have a function, they only invite this group of people. And when this people, let me, let me leave, let me leave that, let me leave that, let me leave that. Sedition, schisms, fractions, the, the body of Christ is supposed to be unified. Unity is a part of the spirit. When the spirit leads, it leads to unification because you're all on the same page. Uh, then you have uh, sedition is, is that heresy, false doctrine. People can have false doctrine. Envying. Boy, this was, this was good. Envying. See, I know jealousy. Jealousy is I see someone have something and I want it. You know what envy is? Envy is you see someone succeed and you mad. Someone get a promotion and you didn't get a promotion? Oh, now you mad. Someone got something and you didn't get it? 
You're mad. You're not mad that you didn't get it. You're mad that they got it. Whew. This is the flesh. Murders. Destroying man's lives. We have that. So you see, you see, ladies and gentlemen, you, I wish I could talk to the, to the commissioner of police. You could buy a million vehicles. That's a hard problem. That's a sin problem. Now, I want the police to do their job, but they can't solve. Guess what, folks? This is why we need to work. You, do you understand? Uh, the Holy Spirit, please lead me in this. You realize you're the key to solve this nation's problem? Some of y'all waiting for the, for the next election to come through so that your party could win, and then you can see some change. Well, I can tell you something. This nation can't wait another three years for the next election. Some of your families can't wait three years for another election. We need the help of God, and the, and the ones that can help this nation is you. You say, but I don't have a college degree. No, you, have, you could have a Holy Spirit degree. And if you're led by the Holy Spirit of God, you can do more without a college degree than someone with five PhDs that don't have the Holy Spirit of God. Had to say that. Drunkenness, control, intoxicated by alcohol. Reveling, dance all night. Excessive nocturnal riding and eating, drinking and dancing. And here's the point. All those things of the flesh, the end of that leads us depressed, downtrodden, discouraged, and weak. So we cannot bear fruit externally if we're dealing with these same sins that they're dealing with because in essence, we look just like the guy who was our teacher. We're telling people they need to live for the Lord and we're not living for the Lord. We need to tell people that they need to abstain from fornication and we ain't abstaining from fornication. So that's how it looks with the works of the flesh. But here's the results of the spirit. It says this in verse number 22. But the fruit of the spirit, the result, the production of being led by the spirit and walking in the spirit, love. Love is agape love. It's an unconditional love. The love that God allows us to have for each other and for others through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Unconditional love. Does your life have love? Do people know you love them? What about joy? Is your life filled with joy? If it is, that's a good indication that you're being led by the Holy Spirit of God. Joy. What about peace? A tranquil state of soul assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ. These are the byproducts of when we walk in the Spirit. There's peace. There's long-suffering. How long does it take for you to react? Some people have a quick temper. Some people say the first sharp thing come to their mind. Some people say, I got to give them a piece of my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, if you keep giving people a piece of your mind, you ain't going to have nothing left. Long suffering, you deal with it, you take it. When you're walking in the spirit, you can do it. Gentleness, oh, us husbands need to be more gentle, eh? We can't talk to our wives, our children, and others the same way. We got to be gentle, kind. Gentleness, goodness, uprightness, character. You know the kind of person you could give them money and they say, hey, hold this money for me, please? without having to worry that they can take any, that's a person led of the Spirit. Faith, in the midst of the storm, you can still stand. People can depend on you. When you're walking in the Spirit, you become faithful. Pastor alluded it to, 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 to Pastor David. He's like, he's like furniture. <laughs> like, I never heard that before. <laughs> but that means he's faithful. There comes a point in time where people should call you to find out if you're coming to church. And then there should come a point in time where they, have to, where they can stop calling because they just know that you're going to be faithful. You're going to be faithful to the things of God. Faithful, meek, humble, um, being, being able to put yourself behind, walking away from a battle you know you could win. 
You know how we like to go? We like to have the last word, eh? All right, and that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. We got to have the last word. That's not spirit. That's flesh. The spirit says, you win. And lastly, temperance, self-control. See, remember all the lustful things? It's unbridled lust. They can't control themselves. They have to murder. They have to dance. They have to drink. They have to do drugs. They have to. They have to. Their flesh is going, 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 going. That's, that's how you know something is wrong when people talk about the spirit and they lose control. Something wrong with that. That's not the spirit that I see in scripture. The spirit I see in scripture has temperance, self-control. And what ends up happening is we end up having the fruit of the Spirit. And then we are able to share the gospel, to bear fruit, and to share the word of God with other individuals. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's, here's, what, here's, our, here's our takeaway from tonight. Hopefully you got this. Walk in the Spirit. Your flesh does not want you to walk in the Spirit. Your flesh wants you to stay angry, stay bitter, stay mean, stay, stay downtrodden. That's what your flesh wants. Your flesh wants self-gratification. Do you even know that if you have self-pity, that's still selfish? So here's what the Holy Spirit wants. He wants you to walk. Be led by him and follow his leadership. Say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do tonight? When you get into the car, Holy Spirit, let's pray before we leave. Holy Spirit, where do, I, I'm planning on going home. Holy Spirit, keep me safe, but if you have someplace else for me to go, I'll go. We wake up tomorrow morning, thank you, Holy Spirit, for waking me up. Thank you, Father, for waking me up. But lead me and guide me along life's way. Here's my plan. I have, I have 10 things to do today, but Holy Spirit, they're written in pencil. I may not get any of these things done, but I may end up talking to somebody about Jesus Christ. So, Holy Spirit, you lead me. Come to church. Pastor, the Holy Spirit just wants me to, to tell you this. Whatever you think that I can do to serve in this local church for, your, for his honor and for his glory, I'm willing to do it, preacher. Because I want to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. And I'll give and I'll serve because I want to be led by him. So, ladies and gentlemen, the key to bearing fruit is first, we bear fruit internally. Then we bear fruit externally. So God willing, with the Holy Spirit's leading, we'll look at that tomorrow. But let's take a moment tonight and let's ask the Holy Spirit, what does he want us to do? Does he want you to come forward? Does he want you to stay in your seat? Does he want you to stand? Does he want you to hug your wife, hug your children? Does he, what, does he want, what does he want you to do tonight? Will you, will you be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading tonight? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the Holy Spirit of God lives within us to give us the directions that we need. But, oh, Father, how often I quench him and I resist him and end up not doing the things that he wants me to do and that you want me to do. But I pray, Father, that you would help me to be sensitive to your leader, leadership, sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Father. Help us as your people to be sensitive, to know how we can bear the, the fruits or the fruit of the spirit in our life so that we can then bear fruit for your kingdom. So help us tonight. However the Holy Spirit leads you, would you follow his leadership as we take a moment and just pray at this time. Tonight, the, the altar is open. You can make where you are an altar tonight as well. But in the, as we are searching our hearts before the Lord, just a few things, even um, as one of your pastors, one, he already said it. Can we make sure we're very clear? Asking the Lord to lead. Lord, will you lead? 
Let's ask him. But I'm going to ask you, that's individually, but as I listen tonight, I also listen for us as a church. Would you also ask in this moment for the Lord to lead us? Lord, would you lead us as a church, as a body? Lord, we desire to walk and be led by the Spirit. Would you pray for that? And as I went there, the Lord seemed to go even further. We need to pray for our leaders to walk and be led. Would you pray if you are in a ministry or if you are leading a ministry? Would you pray for the leading of the Lord in that work and for that leader? That we would walk and be led by the Spirit. And even further, as Brother Kwame spoke, it went even further. Because there are those things that are of the flesh that needs to be removed. And so we need to search our hearts. So it begins inward. Would you in this moment ask the Lord to search the areas of the flesh and be willing to let it go? If he places the light on it, be willing to let it go. Ask him. But we need to move further. If there are any areas within flesh in our ministries, we need to ask the Lord to remove them. If there is flesh within the ministries where there is selfishness, if there is pride, if there is strife, Lord, we need you to move and remove the areas of flesh in the ministries. And if there's any areas of flesh in the work as a church, in the house of God, where we come together as your people, we need the Holy Spirit to help us see them and ask him to deal with those areas of flesh. We do not want to play church. We want to walk in the spirit and be led by the spirit, which means we have to deal with the flesh. And therefore, pray for all of the leaders as well. Because we cannot lead spiritually if we are walking fleshly. So pray. We've heard the word of God tonight. Simply enough for the child to understand. We cannot leave here without dealing with the Lord in the areas that he has shown the light. Father, continue to work in our hearts. Show us. Help us to be obedient to your word. We desire to be led by your spirit. We desire to be a church that has the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. That is nothing we work up. That is nothing we perform. That has everything to do with your presence. We desire. 
So, Lord, help us to see the areas of our flesh. And we know it's a battle. We understand it. But, Lord, help us in these areas because we desire to walk the walk so we can work the work. That's what we heard tonight. You cannot work the work unless you walk the walk. Help us. So tonight, we say, Lord, we've heard, and we still need your help. So help us even as we leave. Dennis, can you help us with Search Me, O God? And we're going to do it a cappella tonight. I think that's how we're going to close. They Search me, O God, know my heart. We can remain seated. Uh, again, in the spirit of prayer, let's pray this song um, and mean it. And we'll sing it a cappella. Search me, O God. And then the service will be over. me, O oh Lord, I know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Verse 4. Oh, Holy Ghost, revival comes from thee. Send a revival, start the work in me. Thy holy declares, thou will supply my needs. For blessings now.